Alright guys, hey, this is Aaron with the Duke. Hey, welcome to the show today. We're doing a little mock draft Monday. Hey, before we jump into it, hit that like, hit that subscribe. Hey, let's jump into this fantasy football pre-draft and let's see what we get here, alright? Today we're going to be running one quarterback, two running back, two wide receiver, one tight end, and then that flex, alright? So your standard um, roster position leagues, 12-man um, team, and we're going to see what happens when we draft here out of the eighth position today, alright? <clears throat> All right, let's get this thing loaded. Mock draft Monday. Hey, these things are really good to use, you know, especially for your mock drafts. Seeing where you can get these players, especially once you find out your position. Obviously, this is a simulator, so it's not going to be exact for what people are specifically taking off the board or what's going to happen in your league. But it'll give us a good chance to run through this and let's see what we can do at certain positions. So. All right, first one off the board. We're from that eighth position. Definitely a big, heavy running back run here. Um, you know, Christian McCaffrey, Saquon, you know, the normal running backs go early. You know, Dalvin Cook, Michael Thomas was taken. So, <clears throat> you know, our current running backs, you know, Joe Mixon, Nick Chubb, Kenyon Drake. Hey, from the first round, I'm starting to think that these guys are pretty much a grab. I don't like doing that. I mean, we know that the running back position is obviously, you know, something that we want to target this year. But, you know, Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, Julio Jones. Man, this is rough. Oh, man, I don't like this position at all. Hey, those running backs go off the board and this makes it hard. You know what? Let's do something here. I want to take, you know, one of these wide receivers. And see which running back ends up first. Let's take Tyreek Hill. All right, he's that boom player, you know, and that's I'll talk about that a lot. We want a boom and a safe, so we definitely want to make sure we get those boom players on our roster. There's only a very few of them actually in the league that can definitely do something for your team, and you want to make sure you can at least get one or two of them. Oh, all right, so see, you know, I like how this ended up now that I took that. At first, I didn't like it too much going wide receiver first. But hey, Joe Mixon took it off, Nick Chubb. I didn't really like taking them in the first round. They're not anybody that I would personally do it, so I didn't want to miss out on a wide receiver if we had to. And I just felt like it was a reach for those guys at that position. But now coming into the second round, you know, we see Travis Kelsey's gone. That's actually really early in the second round for him to be going. But look, we got Kenyon Drake and Miles Sanders open for us both. Aaron Jones is still there. This is definitely turning... Ooh, Kenny Galladay. Hey, we're very high on Kenny Galladay. If we would have gone running back in that first one, and we would have taken Joe Mixon, and this Kenny Galladay was still here, that's definitely what we would be doing right now. But we're going to go with Kenyon Drake, Arizona Cardinals. We're going to get that running back position rolling here for us, all right? So let's see what comes out of here. Let's see what we got going into this third round for the eighth position. <clears throat> All right, here's our team. We got Tyree Hill, the boom, and Kenyon Drake, possible boom. So we definitely like those players. We should be able to put up good numbers from that wide receiver one and that RB one this season. Um, you know, Miles Sanders went next. Clyde Edwards, Hilaire. That's actually really early for what I have him for. Austin Eckler. That's a good pickup right there. Ooh, both quarterbacks off the board. And then you see that wide receiver run. Kenny Galladay actually made it to the beginning of the third round. And then we've got this team right here, Jake from State Farm, of course, going three running back heavy. All right. Well, we definitely want to check out running back first. You know, we're always trying to hit that running back. All right. I like Todd Gurley. If you've heard any videos on me, I'm high on Todd Gurley this year. He can definitely put up those numbers in Atlanta. People are worried about his injury history, but really it hasn't affected him that much as a player. He's been hurt since college. We all know that he gets hurt in the knee injuries. But he's only missed four games his entire time in the NFL. So let's not think that he's just off, all right? We like Amari Cooper over here, DJ Moore. You know, I just think that Todd Gurley is definitely going to be a place where we need to take that, get that second running back, and now we can stack Todd Gurley and Kenyon Drake together. And, this, you know, this roster is actually starting to turn out really good. I'm really liking this, you know, these first three rounds here. All right, two running back. At this point, all of our tight ends that are worth taking are already off the board. Personally, this is actually too high for Mark Andrews. I'm not as high on him at that position. He should be a fourth or fifth round draft pick this year. 
So we're definitely not going to look at any quarterbacks this early or tight ends. We're going to stick to the running back and the quarter or in the wide receivers. Um, DJ Moore, Cooper Cup, Amari Cooper went. Man, yeah, I really do actually like Amari Cooper. He's another boom. But see, what we have going on here is these boom players, and we kind of want to start looking for safe, consistent numbers that are going to help build our roster. So we always want to go for 100 points um, weekly. That's definitely a number we want to go to, but definitely a team that can put up more than that. So we've got Robert Woods, Calvin Ridley. Um, these are both, you know, great receivers. Um, we're really targeting them both. I'm glad we can see them. I don't see any running backs here that are worth taking. I'm not as high on Zach Ertz. I won't be taking a tight end that early unless I can get Travis Kelsey or Kittle, but that's the only two that I would target that early. So let's stack, you know, Robert Woods. Yeah. Let's do that. <clears throat> what do we got here? All right, Robert Woods, AJ Green. Oh man, I can't believe people are still drafting AJ Green. Just don't draft him. Just don't even take him. It's not even worth a dart throw. That's just a waste of a pick, especially in the fourth round. Like, just don't do that. Um, we see Calvin Ridley. Man, look at that roster, Calvin or. Camara, Eckler, and then Fournette is that RB3. Man, I'm really liking what this Jake from State Farm roster looks like. Mark Ingram. It's definitely somebody we want to target too. There goes Zach Ertz. All right. So we've got two wide receivers, two running backs. We're always going to look at running back first, right? David Johnson. You know, David Johnson, that's actually a really good RB3. Um, he's going to get the carries this year. They ran the ball last year with um, with Hyde. So, you know, if you can pick up a Hyde at this point and be able to put him in, you're still looking at a top 15 running back. And when you have 12 teams and everybody has two running backs to start, if you can find a third running back that should finish in that top 20, that means that you have three running backs in the top 20, and there's going to be teams out there that they're RB2, is further back than position 24. So you definitely want to capitalize on that if you can. And that's definitely what we're going to do here. We're going to take David Johnson. <clears throat> oh, I guess even the fantasy pro experts like our pick. Hmm. All right, let's look back at our draft board. Who's taken? All right, we've got three running backs. You know, this is kind of the position I want to start looking at these tight ends. Who? Darren Waller. I would have taken Darren Waller right there if he was there. Um, Stephon Diggs. Yeah, we don't like any of those running backs. And then the quarterbacks. What round? All right, one, two. We're in the fifth round. Ooh, Russell Wilson still there. Kyler Murray. Now, if you know anything, you know, I'm actually pretty high on Josh Allen this season. So I think at this position, let's look at our tight ends. Here we go. You know, I don't, I, I just don't think either of these guys are really worth that either. Um, Kareem Hunt and Jarvis Landry. Let's look back at our board real quick. We always want to target the running backs. I feel pretty safe with this wide receiver core, and I think that we can pick up another wide receiver here in the next two or three rounds. And if not, even on the free agency, once we get started on waiver wire, I feel like we just really need to keep capitalizing on these running backs if we have a chance to do so. And I do see one right here with Kareem Hunt that we are going to take, all right? When he showed up last season with the Browns, he really took a lot of numbers from, um, <clears throat> oh, I'm losing my train of thought right here. But either way, you know, when he took those carries and everything from Nick Chubb last season, he really came in and he put up those numbers. And we really like what he can do this season. I think they're going to use him more, especially out of the receiving game. And especially if there's anything that happens to Nick Chubb, that um, Kareem Hunt's definitely somebody that we want to try and put on our rosters if he's able to fall to us. So let's look here. Yep, see Deshaun Watson went, Dak Prescott, all the quarterbacks went. Oh, we're going the wrong direction, but all the quarterbacks went. Oh, even Josh Allen. Look at that. 
I swear this thing must listen to us. I can't believe that Josh Allen went before Kyler Murray. So we actually just lost out on the quarterback run. And then there was the tight end. So let's let's see where we're at on quarterback. Matt Ryan, Drew Brees. Um, what does our tight ends look like? It's still the same tight ends. I'm actually higher with Jared Cook than I am on these two tight ends this year. Hopefully he can fall to us in this next round. And let's actually take... Drew Brees here. Let's get that quarterback. Um, you know, he was hurt last season. When he came up back from last season, that injury, he put up a lot of good numbers, and he's pretty consistent. He should finish in the tight, top 10 quarterbacks. You really shouldn't have to do much of worrying about the quarterback position, even with Drew Brees' quarterback. You know, so we have that consistent quarterback. He has a good floor. He's not going to have very many off games, especially in that Saints offense. Then we definitely have two running backs that can put up good numbers and big numbers. We got Robert Woods up here. Tyreek Hill can take the top off. You know, this offense right here on how we construct it can actually put up a lot of good weekly points for us. Um, we definitely want to start keep looking at that tight end position. And Jared Cook is still there. And I actually personally, I kind of like tagging quarterbacks with either a wide receiver or or the tight end and getting that double points from time to time. Because, you know, I said uh, Drew Brees, that's kind of a safe floor. He's always going to put up those safe points. And he's not really a boom quarterback anymore at this point in his career. He's not going to put up those 40-point games. But when you can add Jared Cook with him, now you've got the possibility, if he throws that touchdown to the tight end, that week in and week out, that quarterback and tight end tandem together can be a boom. So... It's a safe floor, but also now we just created a boom potential out of our boring quarterback and tight end position in which we waited later on. All right. Jared Cook went, Julian Edelman, Christian. Oh, defense off the board already. All right, we're definitely seeing, you know, a lot of wide receivers going here. Um, you know, we can go after another receiver, but we definitely want to have four running backs. Let's try and see what's left at this running back position. Because if there is someone left, we want, oh, yep, right there, Jordan Howard. I mean, I don't even have to look at the wide receiver position, really, unless there's a possible other big boom. Um, I see McCole Hardman down here, rookie wide receiver. You know, Justin Jefferson might end up coming around later on, but then we still have Curtis Samuel down here. Yeah, I mean, Paris Campbell, Phillip Rivers, there's going to be another wide receiver in that Indy offense that gets catches this year other than T.Y. Hilton, and if T.Y. Hilton can even stay healthy. So we definitely like targeting these Colts wide receivers at this point. But, you know, right now I really think we need to take another run. We're just going to stay on the running backs in this one. Um, if you've watched any of my videos, you actually know that I'm kind of high on Jordan Howard this year. Not in the aspect that he's going to finish a top running back, but where he's going, he's a safe running back to have on your roster. <clears throat> Alright, so we've got five running backs here that we're very comfortable with. Um, depending on how your league sets it as position depth chart, whether you can have five or six at each, you know, we're going to stay five at each, but right now I think, you know, Kenyon Drake, Todd Gurley, David Johnson, Kareem Hunt, and Jordan Howard, I feel very comfortable with this running back situation. You know, the only thing we don't have is one of these rookie running backs that, you know, there's quite a bit of hype on them, somebody going off this year. We kind of know what we're getting out of these running backs, but I actually feel very safe with it. And then with Tyreek Hill and Robert Woods, it... Um, wide receiver, and then the Drew Brees and Jared Cook. I like how this is turning out, but let's let's go in. Let's start looking at these receivers. All right, Nicole Hardman went. Jerry Judy. Mm. You know, I think we can still pick up Paris Campbell in the next round. You know, I don't think Denver's going to throw the ball that much. They want to air it out, but it's still just with Drew Locke. That's not 
it's not a known situation that we really want to be drafting into. I actually want to take a chance on the rugs. You know, because last year Williams and Renfro were those second receivers, and they're supposed to pick up those stats. But, you know, LA still, or Las Vegas, they really just don't have that number one receiver yet. And that's what they drafted here to fill in that Amari Cooper role. So if any rookie wide receiver is going to see points this year that will help us in fantasy football, I think it'll definitely be that with Derek Carr and John Gruden. They're just going to they're gonna want to use him. They're going to try and build that back, and they're going to want to try and put up new points or a lot of points in that stadium. They're going to have to throw the ball other than just run it. Jordan Howard, Henry Ruggs. See, here goes that late end. I mean, if we would have taken Evan Ingram and Tyler Higby in that beginning, I mean, they were like next up in the sixth round. I might have actually jumped on the Jared Cook, but I liked having this tandem together because they can definitely put up points with each other. So we're good on tight end. Um, you know, if you're not that high on someone like that, Jared Cook, and you get down here, you know, you can always go for another tight end. I wouldn't do it on a quarterback, but, you know, Dallas Goddard right here or Noah Fant. If you think Noah Fant's going to break out this season, you can still get him here and you're not too high on that Jared Cook pick. You could take two tight ends. Um, we definitely want to look back at this wide receiver group. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do here. Let's, let's get that Paris Campbell pick in. Henry Ruggs, Paris Campbell. You know, and another one here, you know, I was talking about it. If you've watched the video that I already have on Kenyon Drake, which we drafted in this one, is that Chase Edmonds is actually a very good pick to take here. Normally we won't handcuff. You know, if I, for instance, if I was able to have Zeke Elliott on my team, I'm not going to draft Pollard. I'm not too worried about that situation. I think that this Arizona backfield, while we're high on Kenyon Drake, and if he starts and plays the full season, there's still a couple question marks here. And I think that this is definitely one of those times where if you can, let's actually use the handcuff. Um, you know, at this point, that Arizona offense is actually going to score touchdowns this year, and the running backs are going to. So by doing that, we just capitalize and secure the entire Arizona running back touchdowns and offense. Um, you know, we know what David Johnson was able to do there a couple years ago, and that's just a system now that it's a system running back thing, and we really want those running backs in that offense. Yeah, and see, now we've got all these running backs going off the board in the later round. You know, and I think we actually started that. We talked about trends and starting the trend. And we were kind of off running back, you know, Tony Pollard. And then we get, you know, into the quarterback, defenses, tight ends. And then here we go with this Chase Edmonds. And then it gets this whole system of running backs going again. That's what we want to do. We want to start trends. Because now, no wide receivers have come back off the board. And this is probably where we can go find one of those receivers that could have been taken in the here in the last couple rounds, but they didn't, all right? So let's see, you know, we got D. Westbrook, Randall Cobb, Corey Davis. Where did he finish last year? You know, if Corey Davis can pick up a couple more touchdowns this season and A.J. Brown actually loses a couple, Corey Davis could actually be a solid week-to-week -week play. Let's take him. I don't think that's too bad of a pick there for a wide receiver. <clears throat> All right. Well, that's it. Um, down to the kicker and everything. But hey, guys, I'm going to skip this. Well, let's just run through it real quick just so that it will tell us how we did and we can see. Now, obviously, we're not going to follow everything they say on here for this, but, you know, we'll just pick one. Will Lutz, you know, yeah, sure. We'll just take that whole 
New Orleans thing, all right? These guys can be switched in and out. We're not too worried about kicker in the defense. Um, I'm assuming, you know, anything else. We don't really follow the fantasy pros because all their ratings at the end of this are just going to go off of how they have it and how they see it. Obviously, our boards are going to be a little different. We're going after different players in them. But, oh, B-, minus. you know, that's actually not bad for this one. But, like I said, we don't. We don't pay attention to what fantasy pros think, all right? That has nothing to do with anything. Um, we got Drew Brees at quarterback, Kenyon Drake, Todd Gurley, David Johnson. And then, you know, this running back situation here, I really like the running back depth that we got. I'm, you know, a little shaky on the wide receiver core. Obviously, we like Tyreek Hill and Robert Woods. But then our bench, as far as that goes, we have some potential here. Like I said, we're not too worried about it. If we can get two or three wide receivers, you really don't have to worry about them the rest of the draft. Um, they're going to be picked up. It's the easiest position to pick up in your waiver wire week to week. So just focus on getting two or three, and then don't even really worry about I mean, you could draft two wide receivers as your last two picks, to be honest, because you're going to end up dropping them and getting rid of them through bye weeks and waiver wire anyways. It's kind of a waste of position and so easy to find off the waiver wire. I mean, we really just don't focus on the wide receiver position after our first two or three are gone in the first place. So, you know, that tight end, Jared Cook actually put up really good numbers when Drew Reese came back last year. I think he finished tight end eight. But, I mean, that was because Drew Brees was gone for the first half of the season. If Drew Brees was there for the whole year and they put up those numbers together for the whole year, he definitely would have been a top five or four tight end. And to be able to get him that late past those other tight ends that are going, that's definitely a good bargain right there, especially with this making that boom connection together. And then we've got Tyreek Hill and Kenyon Drake as a boom. Robert Woods is our safe floor. Todd Gurley's our safe floor. David Johnson's going to get those carries. You know, I really like it. We have the boom. We have the safe. And this whole roster actually just filled out pretty good. But, hey, guys. All right. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Mock Draft Monday. Uh, we'll get some more videos up this week. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, and we'll see you later.